Hey friends, let's go ahead and work on some story problems. The instructions for this assignment tell you to draw a picture and write an equation for each problem. So this problem is about someone named Mr. Flanders. Here he is. And he is in his car. Obviously this is an amazing drawing of a car. I dare anyone to say it's not an amazing picture. First, he's going to go one and two thirds miles to get to school. Here's the school. And let's see, and then he has to go one and two thirds miles to get back home again. And then he also drives an extra two and seven tenths miles to go to the gym. So maybe the gym is in some other direction here. Gym. And that is two and seven tenths of a mile. All right. How many miles does he drive in one day? <clears throat> okay, so let's consider, first of all, our equation. We're going to have to add one and two thirds of a mile to get to school plus one and two thirds miles to get home plus two and seven tenths of a mile to get to the gym and back. All of that is going to equal M, or our number of miles that Mr. Flanders is driving each day. It's gonna be easiest to add our whole numbers first and then deal with our fractions. So we can do one plus one plus two gives us four miles. And then to that, we're going to add two-thirds plus two-thirds plus seven-tenths. So two-thirds and two-thirds, let's see, that'll give us four-thirds. So now we're going to need a common denominator for our three and our ten. We're going to go ahead and find our least common multiple for three and ten. I suggest doing your finding your multiples for the larger number first. Since 10 is a pretty big number to skip count by, and I already know that 20 is not divisible by 3, so I know 20 can't be my least common multiple. So that means instead of wasting my time skip counting by all these 3s, I'm going to go ahead and just say that 30 is my least common multiple. So I'm going to have to convert 4 thirds to some amount over 30. So 3 times 10 gives me 30, and 4 times 10 gives me 40. Then to convert 7 tenths to some amount over 30, I multiply 10 times 3 and 7 times 3, so that gives me 21 out of 30. And then when I add those two amounts, I have 61 over 30, which I need to convert to a mixed number. So 61 over 30 is equal to 30 over 30, or 1 mile, plus another 30 over 30, which is another mile, plus 1 30th of a mile. So this is one hole and two holes to add to our four. So let's see, that gets us up to six miles and one thirtieth of a mile. So that's how far he is driving every day. Six and one thirtieth of a mile, or just barely over six miles. Okay, let's work on problem two. Allison is making a 16 inch necklace. Okay, so we have to picture a beautiful necklace that is 16 inches long all together. And the first four and a half inches are filled with red beads. Okay, so four and a half inches, you know these double dashes here. That's the symbol for inches. Four and a half inches are red beads. And then after that, we have eight and three eighths inches 
one's quite a bit longer. Those are our blue beads. Eight and three eighths inches are blue beads, and then the rest is white beads. So the rest of it is gonna be our unknown, which I guess we could just name white unknown, question mark. How many inches are filled with white beads? Okay, so we're gonna take our total, 16 inches, and we're going to add our four and a half inches of red beads plus our eight and three eighths inches of blue beads plus our unknown amount of white beads. So I guess we'll call that W for white beads. All right, when we have added that up together, we should have 16. All right, so let's think about how we can solve this. Let's condense or simplify this part of our expression. So four plus eight, that gives us 12. And then one half plus three eighths, we can simplify that to four eighths, that's our one half, plus three eighths gives us seven eighths. So that means that, let's see, 12 and seven eighths of our necklace is the red and blue beads plus our white beads equals a total of 16. Okay, now I'm going to teach you a little bit of algebra that I'm sure you are already figuring out as you look at this problem. In order to figure out what our mystery amount of white beads are, we're going to have to... Hmm, I made a weird little face here, okay. Anyway, we're going to have to get rid of this amount. So the way I'm gonna do that is by subtracting 12 and 7 eighths from this side of the equation. And whatever I do on one side of my equals sign I also have to do on my other side of my equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 12 and 7 eighths over here. Once this is gone, now we're going to have to subtract 16 minus 12 and 7 eighths. So 16 minus 12, what does that give us? That gives us 4. 4 minus 7 eighths. If you're not sure how to do that, Think about it on, on a number line. If we have two, three, four, and five, let's see. If we have four here, and imagine that the space in between three and four is cut into eight equal pieces, and then we hop backwards seven eighths, one, two, three, four. We're gonna land on three and one eighth. So that tells me that our white beads are three and one eighth inches long. So I can record that as white equals three and one eighth inches long. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you are watching this video and paying close attention, number three is the last problem you need to solve on this worksheet. As long as you show your thinking, you can do questions one, two, and three and be done. But for those of your classmates who are not watching my video, they're not gonna know and they're gonna do the whole worksheet, which is a bummer. Okay, let's look at number three. Stuart draws a triangle it must be an equilateral triangle because each side of the triangle is two and one six inches long. Okay, so if each side of the triangle is the same um, length, we can show that with these dashes here. That means that each side is congruent or the same. Okay, and then Judith, so this is Stuart's shape that he made, made here. 
And then Judith, she made a square. Here's her, that's not a square. That is a rectangle. Let me try that again. Okay, that looks a little more square-like. Okay, Judith, Judith draws a square and each side of her square is one and five eighths of an inch long. Which figure has the greater perimeter, which is the distance around the outside edge of the shape? Which figure has the greater perimeter, the triangle or the square? Okay, so for this, you can either do two and one six plus two and one six plus two and one six. Now the, uh, this I love because we don't have to worry about common denominators, so this does make it easier. T let's see, let's add our whole numbers first. Two plus two plus two, of course, gives us six. And then one six plus one six plus one six gives us three six or one half in simplest form. So the perimeter of the triangle is going to be six and a half inches. All right, let's compare that to the square. So one and five eighths. Plus, let's do it this way. Oh gosh, running out of space. Okay, one, two, three, four. So when we add up our whole numbers, we have four. And then five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths, of course, gives us twenty eighths. Okay, let me think. 20 divided by 8, because we know this fraction bar is a division sign also. 20 divided by 8 is 2 with 4 left over. So that's 2 and 4 eighths. In simplest form, that would be 2 and a half. And then we can't forget our 4. So 4 plus 2 and a half gives us 6 and a half inches. Oh my gosh, are they the same? They are equal. I was not expecting that. Okay, go ahead and write a sentence that says that and you can be done.